Hey, it's Tammy M here of TammyMCoaching.com, empowerment life coach and creator of the Freedom Class. And what I want to talk to you about today is how to expose a destructive narcissist for who and what they truly are. Now, before I begin this video, I just want to quickly announce that we have a few spots available in the calendar this week for the free one-to-one -one consult with either myself or a member of my team for the Freedom Class program. So if that's of interest to you, be sure to stick around till the end of the video for the announcement on how to enroll and register for that free consult. And with that, let's get started. You know, having a destructive narcissist in your life can be, without question, one of the most excruciatingly painful, devastating, and utterly frustrating experiences that we have to, you know, tango with and in my opinion, evolve through and ascend out of in our lifetime here on planet Earth. And there's a whole bunch of reasons for that, but you know, not least of which the, you know, being the fact that these folks are truly master manipulators and have the capacity to play a role and wear a mask at will, depending on who the audience is that they're playing to and what their particular agenda is. So it's quite possible that we're actually the only ones who know what this individual is truly capable of. They can walk out into the world and put on such an incredible performance with whether it's, you know, our family, our friends, their colleagues, the neighbors, whoever it is, right? They can put on such an incredible performance that we come off as the crazy ones. And the truth is, the more we react, the more we express what is more often than not very legitimate reactions to very crazy behavior behavior crazy making behavior and attitudes right so we're on the receiving end of what is fully crazy making behavior and attitudes we're being targeted by an individual who's lacking empathy and conscience we're having legitimate emotional reactions and responses more often than not our stuff is being triggered, whatever we brought to the table of the relationship to begin with. So if we have a lot of unresolved wounding and trauma from our family of origin, from our history, from previous relationships, whatever it is, all of that is being triggered in addition to the very rational emotional responses we're having to the BS that's coming our way that we're either observing or we're on the receiving end of. And the sad truth is, and I've learned this over and over and over again in my life, the sad truth is the more we react, the more they are believed. The more we try to convince others of our innocence and their guilt, the more guilty we look and the more innocent they look. And that's like, you know, one of the most gaslighting experiences we can have, right? Maybe they're right. Maybe I am the crazy one, right? And if you were like me, narcissistically abused by a highly narcissistic, very dysfunctional family of origin from a very young age in a myriad of ways, you were gaslit, your self-esteem was pummeled into the dirt, you had all kinds of abandonment trauma, uh, you were gaslit around all of that, right? Like all of the the things that we live in our dysfunctional family of origin get stacked, 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 and stacked some more. And then we walk out into adult life, not this is our norm. This is all that we know. And we are fully attracted to what is a vibrational match, what is in vibrational resonance to that original family of origin, wounding and trauma. And we just continue to perpetuate these patterns, these, this, this cycle of crazy making, excruciatingly painful abuse. And all we want is to be seen and heard and understood. 
All we need is to be validated. And when we finally come across a person, a program, a YouTube video, a situation, whatever it is, that offers some form of validation, like, yeah, honey, that was abuse, and yeah, you're not the crazy one, it's you know, the, to say that it's like salve to the wound is an understatement, right? Like the relief, the waves of relief that come when we, you know, first start to, you know, realize that, uh, yeah, no, yeah, this was all along really horrific, highly manipulative, incredibly destructive behavior that I was on the receiving end of, mind, you know, I'll try to keep this clean, but you know, the way in which they mess with our minds, right? Never mind, you know, our minds, our heart and our soul, and the lasting impact and the consequences, the price that we pay in virtually every area of our life. It's it's something else. So all of that is to say, perfectly normal and understandable that we would want to expose the narcissist for who and what they are when no one else seems to be able to see it. And no one else sees it because they are such master manipulators. They know exactly who they're playing to. They'll select a specific target, sometimes more than one, but typically like, you know, in a dysfunctional, highly narcissistic family of origin like mine was, I was the family scapegoat. Many of you can relate to that. So there's this unconscious agreement that it's okay to undermine, sabotage, target, attack, gossip about, lie to, lie about, you know, hurt, harm this one individual. That's okay, right? With all of their projected shadow gets you know, heaped onto this one individual, right? For those of us who were unfortunate enough to grow up as the family scapegoat. And we carry all of that into our adult lives. And, you know, we're really trying to just, um, we're doing the best that we can with what we have, trying to navigate our way through all of this deeply, deeply unconscious muck that we find ourselves in. And for the love of God, if someone could just see this person or these people for who they really are, for who they truly are. And I can tell you in my own experience, the more I worked to defend myself, explain myself, scream from the rooftops that that's not true. And that's, all, you know, they're, they're accusing me of all of these things when in reality, they're the ones who are doing all of these things, right? Like all, like all the projections, right? The more I work to be seen and heard in that fashion, the crazier I appeared. And to some degree, the crazier I became because life was such a gaslighting experience across the board. And another piece to this is when you're trying to explain to people who have never lived narcissistic abuse, they're not going to understand. They cannot fathom that people can have such Jekyll and Hyde personalities if they've never actually been exposed to this kind of abuse. Forgive me, I'm not actually crying. I have some sort of an allergy going on and one eye is tearing. So forgive me while I deal with my, my teary eyes. But, you know, the point being that folks who have never actually had the experience and this might even be your therapist, by the way, true story. I speak to people every day who are like, you know, I've, I have had therapists, 20 plus year veterans come through my program because they report to me, we're not trained and therefore are fully ill-equipped to deal with the narcissistic abuse that is going on in their own lives, right? So, you know, all of that is to say, if we're trying to be heard and understood and expose this individual to people who don't have a clue, 
about this particular, this very insidious form of mental, emotional, psychological, and spiritual manipulation and abuse, it's going to be very difficult. If you're trying to be seen, heard, or understood by the folks who are actually, for example, the golden children in the family, so there are those of us who play the role as the scapegoat and others who play the role of the golden children, right? The golden children, the select, you know, little tribe, they have a very different experience, a very different experience of this individual than you do, right? So it's going to be very hard for them to see through the lens of your perception, never actually having been on the receiving end of all the nonsense that a destructive narcissist brings to the table. With all of that said, what I have learned in my many, many decades now of experience of navigating through the pain, agony, betrayal, abandonment, all of it that goes along with narcissistic abuse, there is a way to expose these people. And that is what we're going to talk about today. First and foremost, when it comes to exposing someone who lands on the spectrum of destructive narcissism for who and what they truly are, you've got to be willing to stay calm, cool, collected, and most importantly, above reproach. Now, needless to say, when you're in the midst of narcissistic abuse, when you're, you know, sometimes it's a tidal wave that's coming at us, right? Like the mob is coming at us coming at us fully if it isn't you know one individual right like there are those of us who have had those experiences with our families at work what have you so it goes without saying that this isn't going to be easy i'm not here to tell you that there's anything easy about this and the truth is some of you actually aren't even going to be able to do what it is that i'm suggesting but for those of you who can. For those of you who say perhaps are on a healing and recovery journey, you've been doing your own work, you've fortified yourself, your self-esteem is being built up, you're feeling stronger, perhaps you have extricated yourself from this situation to a large degree, you will, if you choose, be able to make the conscious choice to remain calm, cool and collected and again above reproach certainly easier said than done but it can be done and if you're serious about exposing a destructive narcissist for who they are it's vital that you do so find a support system a close group of friends, a coaching program, a therapist who actually specializes in these issues, someone or some ones who actually get it so that you have a place to go to vent, to discharge, to process, to up-level, heal, shift, and deal with all of the feelings that you're naturally feeling having been abused in this fashion, right? On so many levels. So when you have that in place and you're traveling that path, it becomes a whole lot easier to stay calm, cool, and collected and above reproach where the destructive narcissists in your life are concerned because you have a safe place to go to process all of the toxic emotions, to you know work on your healing and recovery in a very appropriate and healthy way that's actually moving you forward so that when you are you know, having to deal with, be exposed to whatever it is, whatever the dynamic is for you, you can keep yourself in that place where you're not giving master manipulators and all their little minions additional ammunition to use against you. It's a big piece. Again, easier said than done. And I'm going to be real, real with you. If you're on the floor because you are being so fully narcissistically abused and you haven't begun any form of program, self-care, therapy, counseling, coaching, something to begin to put yourself back together and build yourself up and have that safe place to go as needed, it's, it's going to be difficult. But when you get to that place, you will be able to begin to develop the muscle of remaining detached, 
and cool and above reproach, not adding fuel to the fire, not playing the game of tit for tat, no passive aggressive digs, cheap shots, you know, all of the stuff that we do from our pace, place of pain, uh, the lashing out, the wanting to get back, the, you know, all the stuff that we do from our pace, place of pain, if we can find a healthier way, a healthier outlet to discharge and deal with all of that stuff, we're going to be a lot more able and ready to hold on to ourselves and not add fuel to the fire. And when we're able to do that, stay present, stay cool, stay calm, stay collected, breathe, detach, and let the narcissist do their thing, they are far more likely to expose themselves, not least of which, by virtue of the fact, they're going to turn up the volume. When they're not getting a reaction out of you, when all of their manipulative ploys and you know projections aren't landing anywhere because you're, you've got yourself to a place where you're able to hold yourself in your own container, your own light, your own strength and your own power, and you're not handing that over willy-nilly, you hold yourself to that standard above reproach and you're not down there in the mud rolling around with these sick people, they crank up the volume and the mask starts to slip. And anyone worth their salt, anyone who truly matters, should be paying enough attention over time where things are going to start to not add up or make sense. Wow, he and she say she's all of these things, or he and she say he's capable of all of these things. And that's not what I'm seeing at all, right? It's a way of turning the tables, so to speak, but in a very healthy, self-empowered way. Next, you need to relinquish the illusion of control. Stop trying to control what you cannot control. When you finally get to the place of surrendering to the reality of what is. And I don't mean laying down and rolling over and allowing yourself to be further abused and victimized. That's not what I mean. But surrender, surrendering, to, surrendering to the reality of what you actually have control over and what you actually don't have control over, relinquishing the fantasy of having control over other people's perceptions, other people's opinions, and outcomes of situations, relinquishing the fantasy of being able to control what a destructive narcissist is or isn't going to say, is or isn't going to do, and all of that, and instead pour all of your time, energy, attention, focus, resources, etc., on taking care of yourself instead, you'll be far better off, and the truth is, people will be far more likely to see what's really going on a whole lot sooner. Now, don't get me wrong. No one knows better than me how difficult this can be. And in my own personal life experience, going back uh, over a decade now, there was you know, one very serious situation that I had to deal with in my family of origin that had to do with some real sick, twisted uh, lies, deception, manipulation, and abuse, et cetera, right? And the reality was I had to stand up and tell the truth about some things. I'll just you know call it what it is. Stand up and tell the truth about some things that had gone on when I was a child. Some very serious things, secrets that I had been handed, lies that I had been handed from starting from the age of seven. And um, the time came when I was 40, so over a decade ago, uh, the time came for me to stand up and speak the truth. Now, without going into the details of all of that, the reality is 
folks who were involved, although others might not see it this way, based on my life experience with these people and knowing what I know today, we're taught it takes a pretty serious level of destructive narcissism, lack of empathy, lack of conscience, sense of entitlement, master manipulation to pull off and do what these two individuals had done in my life from the time that I was a child right through into adulthood, right? Ultimately, uh, the time came for me to stand up and speak the truth about some great big huge things. And there was some serious fallout around all of that. And as painful and difficult as all of that was, I was blessed and fortunate enough to be on a very serious healing and recovery path at that point for myself. This was a big part, a big piece of this healing and recovery journey, big turning point. Uh, the sponsor and counselor and therapist all agreed to whom I was working with at the time that what I was going through was akin to open heart surgery without the anesthetic, where a tumor, was fully being removed from my heart that had been there a very long time ago, for a very long time, right? So it was, needless to say, a very, very difficult time. Now, there was a grieving process that looking back in retrospect, went on for years. So there's, you know, for all the tools, all the work, all the things that I did to nurture myself, care for myself, support myself, get the help that I needed in terms of counseling and treatment and, you know, recovery and all of it, right? All the things that I did, there was a very difficult, painful road that needed to be traveled. That is just the truth of what it is, right? I wouldn't make the only change I would make to any of that, looking back in retrospect, is I would have done all of that 20 years sooner. It's not whether or not I would do anything different if I, there's a couple of things, you know, some, I think some folks got off real freaking easy because I was in such a place of pain, but the job was done. The truth was told. The fallout was what it was. And my only regret was that I didn't do it 20 years earlier. That's my only regret truly in life, right? So here I am all these years later with the benefit of looking back in retrospect. And what I can tell you is Thank goodness I had the guidance of these really wise souls surrounding me and supporting me as I traveled that particular dark night of the soul experience because I knew enough to not try to control what I could not control. The truth was the truth. And the lies were going to be the lies and the deception was going to be the deception. The manipulation was going to be the manipulation and the people caught in the middle of all of this were going to have to make their own decisions. Being the family scapegoat who was being smeared and loyalty conflicts and all of it, it was very clear what the decisions were going to be. Here we are all these later, all these years later and the, you know, the decisions were what they were. Point being, had I been in there, trying to control perceptions, defend myself, explain myself, um, counter the lies and the smear campaigns that I'm certain are going on to this day with this particular circle of people. Had I been in there trying to control all of that, I would have got sick instead of well. I would have had a far more difficult time moving through the grieving process. For me in that particular experience, eight people whom I loved as much as anyone on this planet basically died in one foul swoop, right? They were removed from my life because I had the courage and the balls to stand up and tell a truth that nobody wanted to hear, right? So, you know, not to make this necessarily about me, but to use my experience to say that I can tell you with absolute certainty that the wise counsel that I was receiving at that time was to deliver the information and then take care of me, support myself, focus on my healing and recovery, and let the freaking cards fall where they fall. Let the chips fall where they fall, right? And I am so eternally grateful that that was 
the, the counsel that I received because I know without question that I would not have moved through that grieving process. Long and difficult and painful as it was, it would have been easily twice, if not 10 times as long, difficult and painful. And I'm not even sure I would have ever have actually come out of it had I been hanging on and trying. Many years prior, I had had a very high voltage, painful, destructive experience with a family of uh, origin member who was projecting all of his insanity and garbage onto me and accusing me of doing things I had never done, but things that he had been do doing as a lifestyle for decades, right? But, but you know, this whole destructive narcissist smear campaign and, you know, all the awfulness that went around along with that, I was too young, too naive, hadn't begun a healing and recovery journey at that point, didn't know what I didn't know. And I spent an enormous amount of time and energy and effort trying to be seen and heard and control people's perceptions and control outcomes and get people to, you know, believe me to expose this individual for who and what they were and what it was that they were up to and the truth of the situation. And nobody heard me. Nobody heard me. I think few believed me and, um, and, and very few, you know, the one important person in the dynamic did. And in the end, that's what really mattered. I knew the truth. She knew the truth. That's what it will be. But when I look back in retrospect, it, you know, on these two extremely unbelievably painful, extremely difficult um, soul lessons that I had to walk with regards to narcissistic abuse in my own life. The big difference being one, I was trying to control perceptions and outcomes and the other I wasn't. I did my job. I told the truth and then I got about the business of taking care of me and I let people believe whatever the hell they wanted to believe. And I did whatever I needed to do to take care of me in that process. That meant blocking a couple of hundred people on social media so I didn't get smacked in the face, you know, with, with, with images that I didn't need to see that were hurtful um, and very telling about, you know, where loyalties lie. It's fascinating that, you know, what denial can do in dysfunctional families, right? Um, bottom line is, I have no regrets and I have learned that trying to control outcomes and people's perceptions is a great way to get sick and actually moves us backwards when it comes to exposing a destructive narcissist for who and what they are. Now, you know, another piece to this one is that this requires an enormous amount of faith, an enormous amount of patience, an enormous amount of trust in God's timing. My favorite spiritual text is called A Course in Miracles. Some of you may be familiar with that. And um, one of my favorite quotes, because it speaks to my personal experience so deeply, one of my favorite quotes is, she who is certain of the outcome can afford to wait and wait without anxiety. She who is certain of the outcome can afford to wait and wait without anxiety. So if I am certain of an outcome and I can afford to wait and I can afford to wait without anxiety, there's nothing for me to control. There's nothing for me to fear. And what I am certain of is whether it is now, in five years, in 10 years, on this side of the veil or on the other side of the veil, sooner or later, the truth wins. Sooner or later, all truth is known. All truth. So the folks who are out there lying and deceiving and manipulating and smearing and all of it, fill your freaking boots. You can do that all you like. What I know for sure, the God of my understanding, right? How I understand this universe is actually designed, how it actually works, is the outcome is an absolute. It is certain. 
all of these folks who have been in denial, believing the lies, believing all of the distortions, all of the projections, there will come a day, if it hasn't already, where the truth is going to be known. That's an absolute. And because I know that with absolute certainty, there's nothing for me to control. Nothing for me to control. So relinquish, relinquish the illusion of control. The more you do so, the sooner the destructive narcissist will be exposed for who and what they actually are. It's just a question of time. In addition to everything we've talked about so far, let them do what they do best. We're talking about destructive narcissists here, right? So what do they do best? They lie, they cheat, they sneak, they exploit, they manipulate. And that's the least of it. So let them create all of their, um, you know, nonsense and drama and chaos. Let them commit all of their relationship crimes. Why interfere with an enemy when they're in the process of destroying and or exposing themselves? So the more hands off you are, the more detached you are, the more removed you are while they're doing their thing, the more you're over here taking care of yourself while they're over here doing whatever it is that they need to get up to in their sick little world, let them. Sooner or later, anyone who matters Anyone who's worth their salt is going to see it. It's inevitable. So let them do what they do best. The bottom line is the key to exposing someone who lands on the spectrum of destructive narcissism is remaining cool, calm, clear, detached, taking care of yourself. Even if that means removing yourself from the dynamic, the relationship. And I know, you know, people, you know, come to the comments and say, well, you know, I'm married. I have a two-year-old. I, I get that these are never black or white issues. What I suggest is not always going to work 100% of the time across the board for 100% of the people. But there's a lot of you out there who have the option who have the choice. And for those of you who feel like you don't have the option or don't have the choice, you can move yourself in the direction of ultimately having the option or the choice, right? That's a question of choice, right? So it's not to say that all of this works all of the time for 100% of the people out there in all situations and circumstances. That wouldn't be very realistic. But again, the vast majority of you can make the conscious choice to do what you need to do to take care of yourself. Get into a program, find a counselor, a coach, a therapist, a sponsor, a someone, somewhere who gets it who understands more importantly not just the problem but the solution understands what it takes to heal and recover and shift and up level and evolve and ascend out of all of this nonsense right so when you're on that path taking care of you no matter what's going on with the narcissist and all their bullshit you are going to be much more able, like I said at the top of the video, you're going to be much more able to stay in your power and not give these sick individuals more ammunition to shoot you with, right? Whatever that takes, whatever that takes. And then patience. Trust in God's timing, the God of your own understanding, whoever that is for you. Trust in God's timing. Trust that God and karma are going to take care of all of this. It's a question of time. The more you're in there trying to control it all, trying to control perceptions, trying to manipulate outcomes, trying to be seen, trying to be heard, trying to be believed, all of it, the less that is going to work for you. The more you're over here, calm, cool, collected, loving on you, taking care of you, doing your work, minding your own business, they're going to keep trucking along doing what it is that they do. And when you remove yourself, whether like me, you're no longer the family scapegoat or, you know, you're no longer the target because you're no longer willing to put your hand up and volunteer for that position in anybody's life, um, they're going to have to find someone else. 
And again, anyone who matters, anyone worth their salt, if they're, you know, unless they're completely steeped in denial, and lots of people out there are, that's true. But anyone who matters, anyone who's worth their salt, in my opinion, is going to start to see some patterns. They're going to start to see things actually don't add up. They don't make sense. That might take time. It might take a decade or two, but it's inevitable. It will happen. Your job is to take care of you. My friends, I hope you got some value out of this today. If you liked what you heard, remember to give it a like, drop a comment, let me know what your biggest takeaway was. If you're new to my channel, welcome, welcome. So happy to have you here. Be sure to subscribe and hit that bell to be notified when I post new videos throughout the week. And if you found this helpful, you might also like to check out my video, How to Get a Narcissist to Leave You Alone Forever. You can check that out right here. And as I said at the top of the video, uh, we have some room in the calendar this week for you. A free one-to-one -one consult with either myself or a member of my team with regards to the Freedom Class program. So if you'd like to learn more about the possibility of working with me in my eight-week transformational coaching program, the Freedom Class, uh, there is a link in the description below where you can apply to see if you qualify for a free one-on-one -on -one consultation with, with us. And with that, I'm going to call it a wrap. As always, I will leave you with this. Know your value. Know your value and unlock your freedom. Much love. Bye for now.